I, um, does this one work? No. I'm really very honored today to announce, um, on behalf of the Board of Directors, the first McCain Institute for International Leadership Award for Courage in Leadership. Um, each year, the award will honor an individual who, through selfless acts of courage, has stood unwaveringly for the fundamental principles of human rights, humanitarian compassion, justice, and freedom, and in doing so has inspired the world. By recognizing such remarkable service to humankind, the McCain Institute hopes to play a small part in nurturing courage in each of us to stand up for what we know is right. We spent much of the day discussing leadership, and I'd like to spend a moment on the concept of courage. Um, I was raised by a 101st Airborne dad, and he would always say from the time I was little, wars don't make men, they reveal who they are. And I always wondered what that meant. And I think it has a lot to deal with the idea of courage. So this idea of self-discovery, when confronted with severe adversity, and rejecting perhaps an easy escape by denying what we believe what is right, uh, or know we should stand for, and standing our ground. I thought Nelson Mandela summed it up very well. Quote, I learned that courage was not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. The brave man is not he who does not feel afraid, but he who conquers fear. How fitting that this award, inspired by Senator McCain and his legacy, and also the brave work of Cindy McCain would be the award of this institute. The first recipient of this award is a remarkable 16-year-old girl from the town of Mingora in Swat, in the Swat Valley in northwestern Pakistan, Malala. Swat is a region of exceptional beauty. I've been there. It's located close to the Afghanistan-Pakistan border. In its 2,000-year history, it has not only attracted Alexander the Great, 1,400 beautiful Buddhist stupas and monasteries, Hindu temples and Islamic centers of learning, but also Pakistan's only ski resort. It attracted hikers and tourists from all over the world, and it was called Pakistan, Switzerland. We have heard, we heard today a wonderful quote or a terrible quote that we can tell stories that would make stones cry, and the fate of SWAT, in particular its girls, could make stones cry. All of SWAT's history changed in 2007 when Taliban militants infiltrated from the Afghan border and overran the valley, imposing strict Sharia law and Islamic rule, executing uh, music, uh, music store owners, barbers, uh, murdering policemen, publicly hanging and beheading opponents, and imposing a major campaign to prevent local population from uh, receiving polio vaccinations. They also turned SWAT into perhaps the most dangerous place in the world for a girl to go to school. By 2010, nearly 1,000 government and private schools had closed, and more than 1,000 uh, 120,000 girls had lost, lost access to school, according to UNICEF. This is the place where Malala, the daughter of a school principal, lived and almost died. Malala loved, most of all, to learn. She immediately began to stand up to the Taliban threats, and at age 11, she spoke up about her dream to be educated and be a doctor as they closed more and more schools. She emerged as a symbol of defiance. She began writing a diary for BBC that riveted the world with her tales of life on the front lines under the Taliban. The Taliban so feared this child that they hunted her down. One day, as she and her classmates were returning home from school, masked gunmen boarded her school bus, demanding her by name and terrifying the children. When they found her, they shot her point blank in the head. In her remarkable book, I Am Malala, she writes, I was shot Tuesday by, at lunchtime. By Thursday, my father was so convinced I would die, he prepared my funeral. Their intention, of course, 
was much grander than the murder of a child. They aimed to instill fear in anyone who stood up for a girl's right to learn. They picked the wrong victim. Miraculously, Malala not only survived, but her survival uh, has instilled and inspired courage in students and teachers and girls throughout not only Pakistan, but the world. Today, she leads at 16 a global movement committed to ensuring girls everywhere have a right to an education and get an education. Why should the world care about the exceptional courage of one schoolgirl in the Swat Valley of Pakistan? The editor-in-chief of the Washington Post Book World did a review of Malala's book and wrote, ask social scientists how, they, how to end global poverty, and they will tell you educate girls. Capture them in that fleeting window between the ages of 10 and 14, give them an education, and watch a community change. Per capita income goes up, infant mortality goes down, the rate of economic growth increases, the rate of HIV AIDS infections falls, child marriage becomes less common, as does child abuse and child labor. Educated mothers tend to educate their children. They tend to be more frugal and uh, with family money. Last year, the World Bank reckoned that Kenya's illiterate girls, if educated, could boost the country's economy by $27 billion. Whether an emergency, emerging nation likes it, or lot, likes it or not, its girls are its greatest resource. Malala is being awarded by the McCain Institute because she's a young woman of exceptional courage, grace, and determination. She's the youngest person ever to be nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize and has been named one of Time Magazine's 100 most influential people in the world. Former Arizona Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords writes the tribute for Malala in Time, stating that she, who was also gravely wounded by gun attack, personally draws inspiration and strength from 16-year-old Malala. She said, I've seen courage in many places, but Malala's courage is uncommon. Malala dedicates her book to all the girls who have faced injustice and been silenced. Together, she says, we shall be heard. Quote, they thought that the bullets would silence us, but they failed. The terrorists thought they would change my aims and stop my ambitions, but nothing changed in my life except this. Weakness, fear, and hopelessness died. Strength, power, and courage was born. Today, Malala advocates for young people worldwide through the Malala Fund. Today, we're deeply honored to have with us Shirza uh, Shahed. And Shirza is the um, co-founder and CEO of the Malala Fund and a dear friend of Malala and her family since Malala was 12 years old. Shirza received a university education here in the US at Stanford. After Malala was shot, uh, Malala asked her to uh, help create and lead the Malala Fund. Uh, the Malala Fund launched last October, and its mission is to ensure girls everywhere get the, an education and the opportunities they deserve. The Malala Fund does so through advocacy and community-based scalable projects where girls most need their help around the world. And I think you've just come back from near the border of Syria with Malala. We plan to give the award uh, to present it to Malala at a time when she can receive it, which is not during school days. She's been known to turn down kings, queens, presidents, and the whole world if it would take her away from a day of studies. So today, we announce the award, which will be presented to Malala on a non-school day sometime in the near future. Please join me in welcoming Shiza up to the podium to make an introduction to something very special. Thank you, Josette, for so eloquently telling um, Malala's story, which has been a story of tragedy, but also of deep 
triumph. Um, Malala was shot on the 9th of October 2012, over a year and a half ago. And uh, as Josette noted, she almost died. Um, but instead, she emerged even stronger than before, both in body but also in her conviction and her voice. I had known Malala since she was just a child, and when I went to her bedside after she was shot, I told her, Malala, everyone has heard of what's happened to you, and millions have stood up in support. What they were saying as they stood up was, I am Malala. And what Malala and I believe that meant was, I am brave, I, I have courage. The letters that came in, the videos of support, the messages came from Afghanistan and they came from Arizona. From all over the world, people found courage within themselves as they heard about Malala's story and as they witnessed the miracle of her survival. I think it's incredibly special to be here to, to announce this award uh, because I see that same courage um, in Senator McCain, in Mrs. McCain, um, and in, in so many of us here. But, but really, when I met Mrs. McCain and she offered this award, I thought there couldn't be a more fitting place uh, for Malala to be acknowledged and for her courage to be applauded. Thank you, Senator McCain, Mrs. McCain, and the McCain Institute for this honor. And though Malala cannot be here today, she looks forward to meeting you in person when she's not in school. And we do have a special surprise video in which she's tried to make her presence felt. I would like to say thank you to Senator McCain, Mrs. McCain, and the McCain Institution for their great support and for giving me this prestigious award because it sentenced me to continue my campaign for girls' education. When I was in SWAT, I saw so many girls, including me, who could not go to school, who were deprived of their education. And I, saw, and I have seen so many women in my life who have talents, who have skills, but they don't get the opportunity to show them to society because they don't get the opportunity to get education. So I think that we should continue this campaign to help girls to get education and to go to school and to contribute to the society. And I'm looking forward to meet Senator McCain and Mrs. McCain. And I'm thankful to you once again. Thank you so much.